Despite increased efforts to create inclusive workplaces, data has shown neurodivergent people often experience major barriers to employment, translating into higher levels of unemployment. A new book addresses the benefits of embracing neurodiv neurodiverse perspectives in the workplace and how organizations can include this largely untapped pool of talent. Dr. Maureen Dunn is the author of The Neurodiversity Edge, The Essential Guide to Embracing Autism, ADHD, Dyslexia, and Other Neurological Differences for Any Organization. Thank you so much. This is such an important topic. Um, I, I think we need to begin, for people who don't know at home, what does it mean to be neurodiverse? Give us some examples. Absolutely. So um, neurodivergent people um, tend to have brains that work differently. Um, and it's, it's a broad umbrella term, uh, neurodiversity, but includes autism, ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, just to name a few. So I think when most people who haven't experienced this in their own life hear about that, they think, oh, that's a problem, whether it's a coworker or a potential employer. And so they think, okay, I don't want to get involved here. Tell me why they should. Yeah, I think, um, you know, first of all, I, I would say that there's, it's important that um, we have a, a, a mental sort of mind shift in seeing that we're all just people with strengths and challenges, right? And, um, you know, neurodiversion people often have unco uncommon skills, right, that are extremely valuable. And there's been this huge disproportionality, in, unfortunately, with um, the types of, of skills and value that neurodivergent people have to offer employers and you know those opportunities, right? The unemployment rate is still unacceptably high, but there's there's so much, um, there's so many skills that are uncommon that employers need. I, for example, you know, when you talk about autism, there's so much brilliance there, but a little bit of social challenge. So I, when you think about it, I know you talk about this idea of different, not meaning deficient. Talk about some of the positives, intelligence being one of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so one, one thing I bring up in the book is um, how I think, like, historically, there's been this misconception that, you know, there's sort of normal people and then deficient people, rather than seeing it again as, you know, we're all human beings with strengths and, and, and challenges. And, um, you know, in, intellectual cap capability is, is, a, is a separate issue from degrees of neurodivergence, which some people are, aren't, you know, don't understand very well. Um, but um, for autism in particular, um, there's evidence of uh, un uncommon skills that are extremely valuable, especially in the economic climate we have in front of us, right? Um, where innovation is a huge premium, but things like, you know, attention to detail, um, pattern matching skills, visual spatial skills, um, also just, you know, there's evidence of being less uh, prone to certain cognitive biases that sometimes get in the way of decision making. So. Um, being a little more resistant to uh, social pressure or manipulation actually is really helpful, you know, not just for companies, but also like in management, board of directors, you know, you want, you don't want everyone on your team to be completely cognitively, analytically, and perceptually correlated. You want people that might, you know, see blind spots that other people are missing. That's, that's a, a hedge against groupthink. And a lot of our business and government failures in, throughout history have uh, been due to, you know, a, a, a disproportionate amount of group thinking, not having people in the room that are seeing things from different angles. Right, bringing a different perspective, perhaps bringing more creativity. I feel like this book comes at a very important time because I think people are just beginning to open their eyes to this. I mean, I think back to maybe in school, you know, teachers didn't understand back in the day, children that were different. And of course, employers, same thing, didn't understand that. Why is this time so critical? And, and what do you want people to learn from this book? Yeah, I mean, I think two two reasons. I think, um, you know, it's it's taken. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and it's taken, uh, you know, many years to get to the level of awareness that we're at now. And I know I know this is Autism Awareness Month, but I, the community would like to move it to Autism Appreciation Month. So there, we're you know we're at this point. I think at this critical juncture um, in history where I think there is more awareness and. Um, and, and we could move towards appreciation. And also we're in this interesting um, 
uh, juncture as well, you know, where there's so much change happening, you know, in terms of like the economic climate we have ahead of us, all the t advances in technology, and, you know, being a kind of scientist myself, I think a lot about um, where things are going and how a lot of cognitive work even is yeah. being taken and over. We and really need to appreciate people's special people gifts. People that have, yeah. yeah, different ways of thinking that could um, complement AI very well. Exactly. Well, your book helps give a guide to that. Thank you so much. If you want more information on it, you can check out Instagram or the neurodiversityedge.org.